Good afternoon. Welcome to the press conference of the NATO Secretary General. Um, he will say a few introductory words and then uh, he will take a few questions. Secretary General. Good afternoon. I will be very brief because I said some words uh, on my way into this meeting, but uh, I have just uh, participated in uh, the meeting of the EU Defence Ministers and uh, we discussed uh, NATO-EU uh, cooperation and uh, uh, I'm glad to be able to um, say that NATO-EU cooperation has never been closer and never been stronger than it is today and uh, in July we uh, agreed on a, a joint statement. Uh, I agreed uh, on a joint statement with President Tusk, President Juncker, uh, which adds even more uh, substance to the NATO-EU uh, cooperation and we discussed the implementation, the follow-up on these issues related to hybrid cyber uh, uh, operations, exercises and uh, so on. And uh, it's good to see that we are delivering and turning uh, that dec declaration into uh, reality. Um, I would also like to underline that there is no contradiction between strong European defence and uh, strong uh, Atlantic uh, cooperation within uh, NATO. Actually, strong Europe uh, makes NATO stronger. And uh, it was uh, clearly stated uh, by uh, the ministers that uh, what we need is uh, a Europe which uh, provides um, capabilities uh, in complementarity with uh, NATO. Uh, and uh, it is important to avoid uh, duplication. Uh, so I welcome uh, the uh, efforts to strengthen European defence uh, because that will contribute to our shared security. And I welcome also that it has been conveyed very clearly that this is uh, not about establishing in, uh, anything which is duplicating uh, the efforts of NATO, but which is uh, in, com in complementarity uh, to uh, NATO. Then let me also uh, just add uh, some words about uh, the situation in uh, Syria. Uh, the appalling attacks uh, on Aleppo have shaken all of us and uh, the violence and the attacks we have seen also on an aid convoy is morally total, uh, uh, totally unacceptable and it's uh, a blatant violation of uh, international uh, law. And it underlines the importance of uh, finding a diplomatic uh, and peaceful solution to the crisis in uh, Syria. And I join the international calls on uh, 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 Russia to show credible efforts uh, to restore the cessation of hostilities, to allow humanitarian aid into Aleppo, and to create the conditions necessary for UN-led transition uh, talks to uh, resume. So I think uh, the violence and the uh, killing of so many civilians just underlines the importance of uh, support all efforts to find a peaceful solution to the conflict in Syria. We <coughs> um, are ready for your questions. Please raise your hand, state your media. First question, AFP here on the third. Thank you. Mathieu de Mester from uh, Agency France Press. Uh, is the debate, uh, in your eyes, is the debate on stronger European defence uh, different in the context of Brexit? W what's your opinion on that? Is there an opportunity to have a stronger European defence with uh, Brexit, or what's your opinion? Stronger European defence is something I have been calling for for a long time. Uh, because uh, stronger European defence is about uh, nations, European nations providing uh, capabilities, strategic lift, uh, precision guided ammunition, um, uh, and uh, uh, drones and many other uh, capabilities uh, we need. And uh, uh, the, the fact that I would like to see more European nations provide more military capabilities is something I've been calling for both before the UK referendum and I call for it after the UK referendum. And I think it's also important to understand that uh, in addition to stronger European defence capabilities, uh, we also need uh, closer cooperation between European nations uh, when it comes to a more effective defence industry and we need more research and development 
And to finance all this, we need uh, increased uh, defence spending uh, in, uh, among European uh, uh, nations. So, for me, this is something which has been important uh, regardless of the UK uh, referendum. And again, as long as this is in complementarity to NATO, and as long as this is not duplicating the efforts of NATO, I think uh, we should only welcome uh, stronger European defence, because that's good for Europe, it's good for the European Union, and it's good for uh, NATO. Sadef? I wonder if you have any reaction or comment to the Clinton-Trump debate from yesterday evening and the statement by Donald Trump that he likes NATO but that he doesn't see the US in the role of a world police. Would President Trump scare you? I will not be part of the, I will not be part of the uh, US election campaign, but what I can say is what matters for uh, NATO. And uh, a strong NATO is important for Europe, but it's also important for the United States. And we have to remember that the only time that NATO has invoked Article 5, our collective defense clause, was after an attack on the United States in 9-11-2001. And thousands of uh, soldiers from uh, European uh, NATO allies, and also from Canada, have been in Afghanistan uh, as a direct response uh, to an attack on the United States. And for me, this illustrates that NATO is uh, good for Europe, but it's also uh, important for uh, the United States. The United States has global responsibilities, and uh, for me, this just underlines uh, the importance of uh, that Europe uh, contributes more, and uh, it's able to provide uh, more uh, military strength uh, and take more responsibility for uh, defences and security in uh, Europe. Um, just to, in a way, connect to the previous question, the importance of stronger Europe uh, is not something which is an alternative to a strong NATO. Europe needs uh, 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 the United States and the European Union needs North America and non-EU uh, NATO members as part of uh, the collective defence we provide in Europe. And if we take Brexit into account, 80% of NATO's defence spending uh, will come from non-EU uh, allies. And three out of four of the battalions we are going to deploy uh, to the Baltic countries and Poland will be led by non-EU uh, NATO allies, also non-EU uh, members uh, of the NATO alliance, uh, UK, uh, uh, Canada and the United States. So for me this just illustrates that uh, uh, there is, uh, we need strong transatlantic bond at the same time as we welcome uh, stronger European uh, defence. Writers? Many thanks. Uh, Robin Emmett Reuters, a follow-up uh, to my colleague's question on last night's uh, presidential debate. Um, Mr. Trump claimed that uh, the new ASG for um, intelligence at uh, NATO would refocus his uh, or, um, uh, activities towards counter-terrorism. I wondered if that was at all true. And secondly, Mr. Trump also said that the alliance is focusing more on counter-terrorism because of his criticism I wondered if there was any truth in that. Thank you very much. NATO, NATO has uh, played a key role in the fight against terrorism for many, many years. Our biggest operation ever, uh, our military presence in Afghanistan, uh, was a counter or is a counter terrorism uh, operation. Uh, we went into Afghanistan uh, to prevent Afghanistan from uh, becoming uh, once again a safe haven for international terrorists. And we have built up a substantial uh, uh, and strong Afghan national army and defense. Uh, and we support them, help them, train them uh, in fighting uh, Taliban and uh, fighting uh, different terrorist uh, groups. Uh, so, NATO uh, has and is playing a key role in the fight against terrorism. We have stepped our up our efforts to support the US-led coalition to fight ISIL. Uh, we will soon uh, provide AWACS uh, surveillance plans uh, to support the 
the coalition uh, fighting ISIL and improve the air picture of, uh, of the coalition. And, uh, and we will uh, uh, also step up training of Iraqi officers uh, to increase their uh, capacity to fight uh, ISIL. So NATO is uh, already doing um, a lot uh, together with other international institutions, together with other nations in the fight against uh, uh, terrorism. The new Assistant Secretary General for Intelligence will also, of course, be a tool uh, in our efforts to fight terrorism to uh, share intelligence uh, to, uh, among allies is one of the tools we use in the fight against uh, uh, terrorism. But this is something which has been planned and discussed for a long time, and it's not a result of the US election campaign. So NATO has been focused on the fight against terrorism both uh, or for many, many years, and it's not a result of the US election campaign. Um, so we move here to the second row, the gentleman Yes, from the Slovak broadcaster. Thank you. Uh, Monsieur le Secretaire General, Radio Slovakia International, Jean Daniel. Uh, how? Yeah. Yeah, sure, I will. Uh, how can you, uh, concretely, how can you see a co coordination between, uh, towards refugee? How can you see the coordination between your operation in uh, Eigensee? and the EU operation in Mediterranean Sea. Thank you. NATO's presence in the Aegean Sea uh, has been important and it has made a difference and it, ha uh, and it has uh, helped uh, cutting the lines of illegal uh, trafficking uh, across the Aegean Sea and contributed to the uh, significant reductions in crossings of the Aegean uh, uh, Sea. Uh, we provide real-time information uh, to uh, the Greek Coast Guard, to the Turkish Coast Guard and to the EU Border Agency uh, Frontex. Uh, in addition to this practical support uh, in the Aegean Sea, the NATO presence with the naval uh, assets um, it's also important because the NATO presence in the Aegean Sea has provided a platform for enhanced cooperation between Turkey and non-EU member uh, to enhance the cooperation with uh, Greece, an EU member, and with uh, Frontex. And I think that we can learn uh, from what we have done uh, in the Aegean Sea when we now are also uh, establishing the new uh, maritime operation Sea Guardian. And we are in dialogue with the European Union on how we can provide help to Operation Sofia in the central Mediterranean. Uh, we're looking into whether we can provide uh, log logistical help, uh, intelligence, and in other ways. Uh, so this is something which is now uh, uh, being looked into. Uh, the details and the operational uh, details are uh, now uh, being looked into together with the European Union. And then we are ready to also support Operation Sofia. But exactly how that is going to be done uh, remains to be uh, decided. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. See you in Brussels or the next time that we are in Bratislava. Thank you. <laughs>